All right, I think it is, um, this is working, right? Cool. Um, I encourage everybody to come to the front because this is a panel discussion, believe it or not. Of course, nobody's going to move. But uh, <laughs> thanks for coming. So um, my name is Jason DeLorme. I work at Microsoft. And uh, my job is to manage the relationship with Pivotal um, from Microsoft, uh, among other uh, strategic cloud partners, um, Pivotal uh, prominent amongst those. And we recently worked together uh, very closely with Ford uh, and Pivotal to uh, deploy Ford PaaS on Azure. And uh, the idea behind this talk is that we would share some of the learnings, uh, get to meet some of the engineers that were involved in the project, and open it up to questions. So uh, I've got a couple of pre-canned questions, obviously, from, um, from the experience, but I'd love to hear from the audience if they've got any questions, and um, we'll, uh, we'll tackle it directly. So um, with that, I'm going to um, introduce John Sermon, or, or let him introduce sure. himself. So yeah, my name is John Sermon. I'm a senior program manager on the Windows Azure CAT team. So. Um, the CAT team, as we're called, is we're the customer-facing part of engineering. So we do the largest, most complicated implementations with Azure worldwide. They send us on site. We write a lot of white papers, talk at conferences, and then we also handle executive escalations. So what that usually means is somebody's really, really, really mad, and their CEO is called our CEO, and then they send us on site. Just for know. example. Yeah, just an example. <laughs> just an example, so no pressure. So, uh, yeah, hypothetically speaking. So um, it actually worked out because I used to be an escalation engineer prior to joining the CAT team. So I absolutely love escalations when everybody's screaming and, and mad at everybody. Um, I mean, when I got on site with Ford, I was kind of disappointed because it, everything was, was actually not bad. <laughs> Nobody was screaming at me. It was, it was actually a pleasant environment. So um, with that said, uh, I'll let, you, let Hayden introduce himself. Great, thanks. Um, my name is Hayden Ryan. For those of you that didn't meet me yesterday in my talk, um, I'm an advisory solutions architect with Pivotal. Um, I'm part of what we refer to internally as Dino's team, which uh, Dino's our boss. Uh, we go out on site and work with large corporate customers to perform dojo operations. So we pair with them, we build up their platforms, we teach them day two operations and how to manage your Cloud Foundry environments, um, as well as doing a little bit of professional services as well into the mix. Um, I've been at Ford since October last year, and I've been working for Pivotal now for a couple of years. This is my second summit. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Hayden. So uh, tell us a little bit about what it is that uh, we actually built together uh, with Ford. Give us a high level overview of the product. What, what yeah, is Ford sure. Pass? So Ford Pass was the first um, application that Ford wanted to deploy to Cloud Foundry on Azure. Uh, it is a mobile application with a back-end written in Spring. Um, Ford actually used Pivotal Labs as well as their internal developers and Icon Mobile and a couple of other development houses to actually do the application development. Um, and then they engaged with, uh, with our team, the PCF Solutions team, to come out and help them build up the platform. So what we originally built was a a deployment of Pivotal Cloud Foundry uh, 1.5. Um, at the time, we did have 1.6 out. This was back in October. We hadn't done a lot of testing on Azure, though, um, whereas we had with 1.5, so we'd done a couple of POCs, um, and we were very confident that it was going to work quite well. So we, we stuck with what we knew was going to work um, and deployed that. That was the first foundation that, that went up. We interfaced with Ford's application teams um, and got a bunch of requirements from them, one of them being that, okay, they now want this to be active-active, and they need this in the east and the west regions of the US to start with. And that was because another component to the application was actually built on the Microsoft PaaS solution, um, and so they wanted to keep latency down in terms of communication from PCF to the vehicle SDN. Yeah, so I, I put, um, this is the, the architecture slide that you shared in your other uh, presentation. Yeah. So I just put that up maybe a little bit late. And uh, I actually had this slide up for a second. This yeah. is uh, bring your toothbrushes, right? Uh, can, you, uh, can you tell us a little yeah, bit yeah, about sure. the, uh, the toothbrush? So, let's go back to the architecture first. Um, okay. So in terms of the active-active, uh, there is one issue with deploying active-active that you do have to be cognizant of is how do I get my data to replicate? So in this... Um, deployment, what we actually used was Gemfire. Gemfire has a feature called WAN replication that enables you sorry, to uh, connect through a VPN and to sync what's in Gemfire in each of those 
regions. So that's what we use to keep um, state and data correct between the two deployments. But if we go back to the, the toothbrushes picture, <laughs> this is a whole bunch of us, um, including some of the Ford guys, or mostly Ford guys, um, on the day of the launch. It was, uh, there was a lot of work that was done leading up to the launch. Uh, there was a lot of iteration, and I mentioned this a little bit yesterday, um, in terms of deployments, in terms of um, additional features that we wanted to, to utilize in Azure. Um, and so leading into the launch, we were all really nervous because, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a big launch. It's a big launch for Microsoft, for Ford, massive launch for Ford, and for Pivotal. And so um, after one of the meetings with, with Marcy Clavon, the C, CIO of Ford, she said, well, you guys better bring your toothbrushes. So we actually have this photo of all of us ready, waiting for any issues that were going to happen to jump on them with our toothbrushes. And unfortunately, well fortunately, we didn't have a single issue, and we still haven't. So we've had zero downtime of this platform since launch, which is pretty awesome. So there was um, a couple of references so far in the conference to uh, unicorns, rainbows, and, um, <laughs> and uh, butterflies, actually. Butterflies and rainbows. So it was all butterflies and rainbows. Uh, were there any lessons learned, <laughs> John? Actually. Yeah. What was yeah, the biggest lesson learned? Actually, so yeah, there was one lesson learned. I always look for um, only one. I like to, I like to find broken <laughs> stuff because I love fixing stuff, and uh, and unfortunately there wasn't a lot. But there was one thing. So, um, and I'll use an analogy. I don't know. Um, I like to use analogies when I'm explaining things. So uh, TCP connections. If you're familiar with TCP, you know you create a socket connection to a client server environment. Um, connections are a lot like uh, relationships. So. You can have short relationships, you can have long relationships, you can have relationships that are abruptly or ended, terminated by third parties sometimes. Um, <laughs> so in this example, um, I'll, I'll kind of explain what was happening here. So say um, we've got, I think, hey, and you're single, right? Yeah. So you're a single yeah. guy. Say you, start dating, <laughs> say you start dating somebody, you're talking to this girl, let's call her Miss Azure. And you're talking to her, she's real pretty. She's you know. an evil mistress now. Yeah, you're talking to her quite a bit, and your know, conversations are pretty frequent. Um, after a while, like say four days or something, you just you, you don't contact her. And she's sitting there looking at her, um, her connections, and she's like, oh, I haven't talked to that guy in like four days. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just delete him out of my contact list, because I ain't got time for that. And um, so Hayden, the fifth day, he's like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact that girl I was talking to. And when he does, he contacts her, the number shows up as unknown. She's acknowledged the fact that I got a call from this guy, but she doesn't know who it is anymore. So she basically does an act reset. So she acknowledges it and resets the connection. So in Azure, what was going on, we had a idle timeout that basically at like four minutes, I think was a default, yep. we were destroying that connection. And it's a standards based, we're not gonna send a reset proactively to the client. So we kill that connection, Client doesn't know about it. He's still trying to talk to the, the server, the network load balancer. And she's like, I don't, I don't know who you are. You're nothing to me. So, um, <laughs> so she resets the connection. The client gets the, the reset, and he just is like, what is this, and throws an unexpected error. So lesson learned here is we had to lower the TCP key lives on the clients to be consistent with what was in the Azure load balancer. So once we did that, it was like everything, all the problems we were noticing, these intermittent problems, fixed it. Like, it, it almost became a joke, like, is, uh, if we ran into an issue, it was like, were TCP keep lives um, enabled? Do, yep. we, do we lower the keep lives? And, and yeah, if we did, then like, ah, well, I don't know what it is. And so, um, ultimately, that was the most effective change. And it was like, once we did that, it was like we were, we were heroes at Ford. Yeah. <laughs> well, not well our lives got a lot easier at that point. Yeah, yes, it definitely did. Yeah. So, so it, it should be added as well that the, um, the TCP packet that gets sent out, that's, that's not required by the RFC. It's optional um, to be sent back. And so it's completely up to the vendors as to whether or not they're going to implement that. So, so the resolution um, kind of posted here, right, was, mm -hmm. uh, was a change. Can you describe, um, Hayden, the, the change that, um, that was implemented? Yeah, sure. So um, the Pivotal engineering team um, developed a Bosch release that was then applied to every single virtual machine using the Bosch update runtime config command. Um, and all that that did was to set the TCP keep alive for the kernel on the VM. And for the runners and also for cells, um, that will flow up through into the containers themselves as well. So all the issues around networking that we were seeing, once we enabled that, they just they were resolved mm -hmm. straight away. Awesome. So 
that it was interesting actually digging into it because it manifested in different ways. Um, we had an issue where we had Spring Cloud Services and that was an application that was pushed to Cloud Foundry and we found that after a while it wouldn't be able to communicate to RabbitMQ. And so that was because the connection pool was filling up and it wasn't clearing out. So once we enabled the TCP Keep Alive, that worked correctly and the issue was resolved. Yeah, I think it, it manifested um, in, in other ways in the sense that it felt unstable, right? So yes. the, the environment itself, there was a, a broad label across it for a while that, hey, it's unstable until we really got to the root cause of, of, of what this was all about. And after that... Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that was about the time that the CAT team got called out, which... Yeah. So I, I'm from Australia and yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the CAT team in Australia is, stands for the Psychological Assessment Team. It's something that the hospital sends so out when they think you need to be an involuntary <laughs> patient. Yeah. Um, so when, when I got told that the, the Microsoft Azure CAT team were coming out mm -hmm. to assist at Ford, I was like, um, what's that saying about me? Like, <laughs> but, you know, am I okay? Is, like, we're kind of different. We're like a dysfunctional family. We're all, I look a little different than most guys in Microsoft maybe. And yeah, we, we kind of, we're strange. And <laughs> we work weird hours, but we, we try to, we, we're able to fix stuff. But, um, but yeah, and then, Whenever we ran into an issue, you know, it was Hayden and I and then Ford, and so it's Hayden and I were both like, oh crap, is it Azure or is it Pivotal? And so we're, we're working as a team now, which was really nice. So I've worked with partners. I've been at Microsoft like 15 years, and as an escalation engineer, I've worked with tons of partners. Um, this was really a, kind of a breath of fresh air because they were, we're on the same team, and whenever there was an issue, I was able to pull in our CSS team, which is our support team, we have CSS escalation engineers that are working with the Pivotal escalation engineers, and they know the product, they know each other, and they work together. And it was like this, I think the one time we actually did have to create a uh, support request, request, it was like this, like a massive amount of uh, technical horsepower on the phone. It was really impressive. And I was like, yeah, these are my guys. And then your guys got on the phone, and I was like, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. So I think it's and, w worth mentioning that there's, you know, Microsoft's a big company, there's lots of different teams, and um, you know, if we were to say there's lots of thanks, let's say, uh, to, go, to go around the table here. Um, John, can you describe uh, a couple of the teams that are around? So you mentioned CSS, we've got the Azure Cat. Mm -hmm. So I, I live on a team called DX, and I'm, I'm responsible for managing the partnership with, uh, with Pivotal. We've also got a customer team at Ford. Um, they have a cloud solution architect, they've got mm -hmm. uh, a technical account yep. manager for, yeah. for support. Yeah, and that's like, that's, with our team, because we're part of engineering, we're kind of unique. So we come in, I, we're not as, as um, sensitive to different teams. So a lot of times I'll stomp all over sales and marketing. I'll say things that they're horrified that I've said. They usually hate it when I start talking. They're like, don't tell them that. But I mean, we keep it real. And we've had to interface with all these different teams. And we had sales, marketing, um, DX. You guys are great. You come in and help the customer get up to speed. And you've got breadth across customers. We're deep technical. Um, we've got our engineering team, so um, we've got Kundana's team, she did a talk yesterday, and then Ning and her team from uh, Shanghai, they are amazing. Like, I don't think Ning and her team actually slept for like two weeks. I don't know. She was always on IM whenever I had a question on CPI, and Abel, they, they would fix it. I'm like, where, that, they're robots. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so we interface with them, and then the CSS team, that's where I came from. So uh, we interfaced with them, and we were all kind of on the same page. So it was actually, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was, it was exhausting. I mean, I lived in Detroit for like three weeks. I had, had like clothes for three days, and then um, I know my boss said, you need anything? I was like, I need some clean clothes. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I stayed there for three weeks just to make sure everything was fine, and it was. And, uh, but yeah, those are the main teams, and then we worked with Pivotal Engineering, and then yep. Hayden's team. Yeah, and Ford so, was deeply involved too. Yeah, Ford. I mean, yeah, Ford, so, yeah. yeah. Let's, 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 let's not take a Ford's role Ford, in this. And so the Ford guys, like, they were great. Yeah. So um, we've got, uh, yeah, um, Shaji. I don't know if he's here. There he is. Yep. Yeah, he was amazing to work yep. with. And, uh, and Motion as well. So yeah, Motion. Right? Yeah, they were yeah. they were awesome to work with. Sometimes, like, I'll get on site with customers, and it's just, you know, they're not as deep technical as you'd like. But these guys were were solid. They they knew their stuff, and uh, it was a it was really nice working with them. So switching topics, and, and the mics are open if you want to come and ask questions. I've got, I've got a couple more here. Um, Hayden, uh, Pivotal talks about certain levels of availability yes. uh, in, in the way that you deploy Cloud Foundry. Can you describe some of the subtle differences maybe between uh, Azure as an IaaS versus some of the other uh, public IaaS that you work with, and public cloud IaaS, and um, you know, how Pivotal Cloud Foundry runs with, uh, 
um, in the context of availability? Yep, sure. So um, in, in PCF, we usually talk about the four levels of high, of high availability. Right? They range from um, Bosch restarting uh, virtual machines using Bosch Resurrector um, to Monit that runs on each of the machines, uh, that runs on each of the VMs restarting processes. Uh, then we have Cloud Foundry itself, as you'd be aware, um, will automatically restart application instances if they go down. And then we also have the level of high availability at the availability zone level. Now, currently, Azure doesn't support availability zones, but they do have something else called availability sets. And this is something that is quite distinct from other public ISs. Right? So I understand that availability zones will be coming very, very shortly on Azure. So there's going to be a fifth level of high availability there. Yeah, we got managed disks too. Did you mention that? Well, not, not in the scope okay. of what I was saying, but yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah. what are some of the other um, challenges that you faced? Um, we, we talked a little bit about storage um, and the way the, the storage system works in, uh, in Azure relative to some of the other IaaS. What, what, what did you learn there? Yeah, so Azure provides a lot more um, transparency through to how the storage actually works than other IaaSs. Um, so it gives the, the user really the ability to control where they're putting their data. So all the virtual machines that we have in Azure are backed uh, by a, a VHD. And then Bosch attaches persistent disks for, for data, as well as having an ephemeral disk, um, which actually runs on the virtual machine hard drive and the compute cluster. So because it exposes up a lot of that details, it, it becomes a, a situation of you need to actually be cognizant as to what you're doing, where you're putting your data. Um, you can get into situations, uh, and I mentioned this briefly yesterday in the talk, um, where you need to make sure that you're managing your storage accounts correctly. So a storage account is a concept where it's, it's a fault tolerant um, cluster of physical hardware that's located in what's called a stamp. Now, a stamp is a very, very large, um, well, they're racks of uh, storage, and that's located in a data center. So it, as a best practice, um, if you wanted to be super paranoid, you absolutely should be splitting your deployments into multiple storage accounts, and even potentially your jobs um, until managed disk comes along, which will resolve. Yeah, yeah the, the takeaway is like multiple storage accounts is uh, you can never, have too many storage accounts sometimes. I mean, that gives you a lot more granularity in terms of managing things. When managed disk comes out, that's going to make things a lot different. But I mean, I think that's one of the, the key differences yeah. that we had with the other clouds that, um, that you, might, you guys might have been familiar with. So, Now, are there any questions from the audience? Was there a shared screen or something? Can you come up to the microphone? Oh, yeah. So we can any record? questions, like, can if you don't mind coming to the microphone or so we get it on, um, on the recording. Is there any shared storage support? Is the question? Uh huh. Which? Yes. Uh, and can you qualify that? Um, so shared storage in in like um, you know uh, containers. Uh, uh, so beyond the beyond the container, beyond the VM, is there shared storage? So just in general, Azure Blob storage is a, you know a shared storage source. Yeah. Um, in the context of, of Cloud Foundry, can you, can, can you qualify it a little bit more? But, uh, I'm, I'm still loving out for mm -hmm. Sure. Things, yeah. things, my, uh, I'm trying to see in the traditional apps cross country where there is yeah. more, uh, you know, usage of the common storage, uh, preferring it on one container where I've done and I'm picking up the same place and processing multiple jobs. So state, but, I mean, yeah. essentially maintaining state. And I think you guys use, um, there was a lot of Gemfire use. Yeah. Um, maybe you can talk about how Gemfire was deployed, uh, which is a, well, yeah, so you, uh, just, just to address the question, um, there are a lot of options in regards to, to storage. Um, cloud Foundry is a cloud native uh, platform, which essentially separates the processing unit out from data storage. So you have a lot of different options as to, test. yeah. Um, a lot of different options as to where you want to store your data. So Gemfire was one of those, which is an in-memory data grid. Um, we, you know, you could easily use MySQL, you could have uh, blob storage, and 
from Cloud Foundry in Azure, you can actually use any of the Microsoft services directly. Yeah. Someone doesn't, doesn't, doesn't like me. <laughs> the microphone. Well, <laughs> user provided service. The mic is now yeah. working. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 right. Yeah, so you would, you'd do that using a user provided service. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sean. <laughs> So on some of the other IaaS's, there are tools to test your high availability. Is there anything similar to that on Azure? High availability. So Simeon like, Army, shut down your instances at random, disconnect your security groups. Yeah, actually, yeah, there are some. I don't know if we announced that yet. <laughs> we don't want to do any product announcements yeah, here. Yeah, I know. I always do. I'm the worst about it. There's nothing in the so, public. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 It's funny. I was like, I was just in a a session the other day on that, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. I'm, wor I'm the worst about yeah. like. Blah. Happy to follow up with you offline yeah. on that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Good, good question. Big, short answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's multiple ways. Yeah, so our team, we've got um, solutions that we've written to, to do that. We've got, uh, you know, more broad Azure specific ways to do that, that we've got things that are coming out that we do that. But yeah, definitely get up with us because we, we know people. We know different ways to do that. Thank you. Question. Uh, you talked more about the mobile application or of uh, Ford. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us uh, more about the application architecture? Did it do more reads, more writes? Did you run any performance benchmarks uh, on Azure to see you are meeting the required SLAs? Yeah, I, I can talk a little bit about that, but I was there was actually a different team at Ford that was involved in the application development. They did run full load tests with their expected load all the way through till um, the end of the year. So they've absolutely hammered Azure and Cloud Foundry on Azure, mm -hmm. um, and they, all those tests did succeed. Mm -hmm. And did the app have more reads or writes? Or, well, I, what was the combination? I don't know. I, as I was saying, it, that was a different team. Like at the stage it is now, I believe it's predominantly um, most reads, but uh, I think eventually we'll do more writes. So we had a, a separate, uh, we have Microsoft Consulting Services, another team that I forgot to mention, um, that they've partnered with uh, Ford early on to create the, the mobile app. And so that part talks to the telematics platform, which is the part that is inside the car. Like I think it's the 2017, uh, escape. not just, yeah, escapes, and I think I can say that, but. Um, the, okay with that one. I'm okay with that one. All right, four <laughs> guys are gonna get mad at me. Um, but yeah, the, that's what uh, talks to that. And I think the majority of the workloads there were, were read oriented. I think eventually we'll do more writes, but um, based on the, I mean, it was a, there's lots of docs and stuff on this. It was kind of like drinking from a fire hose when I was ramping up on this. I'm like, oh wow, it's a lot of stuff. So yeah, it was, uh, it's pretty performant. It was, um, if you meet up with me afterwards, I think I have some public docs that I could share with you guys. But so, um, we, we dealt mostly with the, um, is the marketing, so I forgot yeah. the acronym for it, but it yeah. was the microservices framework that was written in PCF that was running on Azure was the, the big piece that we were focusing on. So how many current users are of the app right now? How many downloads have happened? It was. We, we can't say that. Can't say that. We, we, we haven't been cleared by Ford. See, I was about to say it. I was about to blab it. Yeah, that's why, that's why I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for the question. <laughs> yeah, good question. Thank you. Yeah. What? Hi, uh, I'm Tushar. I had a question regarding monitoring at the IaaS layer. So things like storage monitoring, and you'll have two different kinds of storage accounts. And like, what, like, what's the roadmap look like on supporting monitoring at the IaaS layer mm -hmm. in Azure? Like, a lot of things are not very visible and clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like to draw parallels, I don't want to do this, mm -hmm. but like Amazon has things like CloudWatch, which shows metrics at the IaaS layer. And yeah. Like, what's the roadmap looking like? Yeah, the roadmap again. The question is. If yeah. So, so there are some capabilities in, in Azure. So we have um, App Insights um, in Azure, which will do some monitoring logging. There's also a lot of third-party solutions that plug in, like New Relic, etc. Um, and PCF has um, built-in capabilities as well. So we've actually, um, I think, in the case of Ford, we, we started prototyping a little bit. Um, Microsoft has Operations Manager, and uh, Ford were a user of that, and we, we did some uh, initial prototyping of, of pulling mm -hmm. some of that data into um, the Operations Manager, yep. um, plugging yeah. in there. And I think that the, you see the dashboard, that big green thing that we're all standing in front of with our toothbrushes, which is weird to see. Yeah. Yeah. We're in front of a green screen. That was the dashboard that they used, uh, Splunk, and um, I think internally Splunk, you right. guys used yeah. Datadog for uh, kind of wrote your own. 
So my question is like, are those like Bosch health monitor metrics or are those Azure, like are those coming from the infrastructure or are those coming from the platform? Yeah, th those ones are uh, the Bosch ones. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's Thank a great you. question. It's good to hear questions like that because a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll roll out some giant, you know, application architecture and they'll have no monitoring and then there'll be a problem and nobody will know that there's a problem yeah. until an end user calls in. So this is, uh, this is good. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Hey guys, uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is more on the operational aspect of it. Right now, I mean, I can see there's Pivotal, Microsoft, and, uh, and Ford involved. Who's really operating it right now? And how, what, how did sure. they hand over okay. work yeah. Yeah. Well, that guy right there. One, one guy right there, one guy right there. <laughs> yeah. right. Um, yeah. So we've been at Pivotal um, in terms of our uh, platform and operations dojos. We've actually been hands off keyboards. So it's basically been Ford that's been driving all of this. Um, they've built new environments themselves. They've deployed PCF themselves. Um, we have been there as an escalation point, but they're very self-sufficient. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they've, they've got mad tech skills. I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think it's an important point um, to, to reinforce is that, you know, our, our role from a Microsoft perspective is to make sure PCF runs great on Azure. So we've been working, you know, very, very closely, and I, we didn't really get to it, um, but the CPI got revved many, many times during this project, and there was kind of some rapid iteration with the, with the Microsoft team who was building that and contributing it to open source. Ultimately, Pivotal was helping teach the customer how to, how to run this and manage it, and, and the customer uh, is ultimately managing it um, in the end. Thank you. That makes sense. I yeah. just want to make sure that was, that yeah. was the case. Yeah. 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 Um, as for you mentioned that you, you guys deployed it with 1.5, mm -hmm. have you already upgraded? When are you planning to upgrade? What, is it a decision that Ford would make? I mean, what, what's your idea? The, the 1.6 that? upgrade has been scheduled. Um, it's again resources and timing. That's the the only right question. Right now, you're yeah. running at on 1.5. 1.5. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so we've got about three minutes left. Um, so if we wanted to, to, to kind of recap um, some of the things, any, any other um, big learnings that you guys wanted to share? Mm -hmm. I, think, I mean, uh, I know I, I, like I, beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, and, yeah. We had, we, had, we kind of formed a bond there. We was like he likes beer and I like beer, so we get on. <laughs> yeah. One, so one, so I'll take one takeaway. One big happy family, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Very that close collaboration. We had, yeah, it was kind of Pivotal and Microsoft. It, we've kind of partnered together, and I'll be going on site to Pivotal for the next six weeks, and um, with another engineer uh, from from Redmond. So we've got a strong partnership, and we're committed to. Um, to making customers successful, so that that was the main takeaway. You know, it was, I didn't know what to expect when you know when I go on site with customers. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad, but I, I really had no idea what to expect, and it was it was uh, I actually had a blast. It was it was fun. I mean, it got stressful at times, but it was overall we worked well together. So yeah. I'm, I'm also going to put so, you on the spot a little bit, John, and I'll come back to you. Yep. Um, so so one of the things that I I understand um, uh, the CAT team uh, delivers is some uh, best practices and. Um, yes. Patterns and practices. <laughs> exactly right. So yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So we have a we have a patterns and practices team. So they're part of the CAT team. So um, it's funny when I was on site at, at Ford, I get everything in my inbox is like a variation of like hurry up, I need this, that, and so I'm getting all this information to engineering team. And so one of the groups that I'm giving this engineering feedback to. Uh, it's patterns and practices that, hey, we need to document best practices, architecture best practices, um, how to configure storage options. So I've given the patterns and practices team like tons and tons of stuff on here. You need to write this up and make it pretty and take all my typos out because um, it's something that we need to get out there quick. So there, there's, uh, there's some of it out there, um, like for OSS, uh, Cloud Foundry in general, like some of the stuff's in the the, um, the GitHub repo. You, there's some documentation there. Um, and we've I've just got, got some PCF document, some Pivotal, yeah, uh, Pivotal Cloud documentation. Foundry documentation it's published getting better, recently. So, uh, and if anybody has specific questions, you know, my email, I'll uh, see me at the end of the talk. I'll be glad yeah, I'll throw it up on the, on the yeah, screen. John Aiden, any I, kind of closing thoughts from, from your yeah, perspective? Yeah, I've got a couple around that. Um, I think that also documentation is super important for the operators. Um, that are actually using the platform. So if, if you see an issue, log as, and collect as much logs as you can, submit a ticket as early as possible, and mm -hmm. Microsoft have been super responsive on, on addressing these issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it was a lot of fun, um, cross-company pairing, 
um, mm. with John and with, with others. And it, it's definitely been super fun. And I just want to say thank you to Ford, thank you to Pivotal, thank you to Microsoft, thank you to Abby, thank you to everyone. <laughs> yes. um, it's, it thank definitely you. has not just been John and I on this. Um, there are so many people that have been involved in this project mm -hmm. and have just been yeah. above and beyond in every aspect of it. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, and um, we'll we'll uh, we'll send this out afterwards. Actually, I was going to type the, the email addresses in there, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this is John S I at Microsoft and John S I. Um, yeah. I'm Jason D E L at Microsoft. I'll put these up in a in a second here. Um, so if you, if you're actually looking to run Pivotal Cloud Foundry on Azure, um, likely uh, in um, your company probably has a relationship with Microsoft. Uh, would happily get engaged, work with you and Pivotal um, to to uh, to see it running on Azure. Yeah. Uh, there is a marketplace, an Azure marketplace offering that uh, you can go to that uh, will allow you to deploy it in your own Azure account. Um, so I'll just throw that um, up there right now, which is um, aka.ms slash CF Summit. This is Agile presenting yeah. right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it's While you're doing right that, here. one last thing. So I'm the functional lead for um, Pivotal Cloud Foundry on the Azure CAT team. So we have 10 other guys on my team that have ramped up. And, Ad, and Ryan, he was actually on site with us for a week at uh, Ford, so he'll also be working with uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry going forward. Awesome, well thanks guys, and thanks for your questions.